So I just put this bottom fence in this morning for the horses. And if you look at this square, they're waiting to come down here. If you look in this square, there's hardly any rye grass, which is what I've been trying to work towards for years. So you have basically these three here. Not quite, this is Coxfoot here. This is Coxfoot. This one here is Coxfoot because it supposedly looks like a Coxfoot. And then I'm not sure what kind of grass this one is. That's a different one. I'm not great on my grasses. Then you have this grass here. That's a different grass. And then this is a different grass. So that's four different grasses. And I haven't owned, here's another one all the way down here. That's a different, that's one of the very short grasses. And there's hardly any rye in this mix. Ah, look, there's some rye. This is some rye here. That's rye grass. And what somebody once told me was that the reason rye grass was chosen as the grass. Oh, here's another one. That's a different grass again. The reason rye grass was chosen uh, to be the monoculture was because its seeds are so easy to collect. So it was easy to do research on rye grass to see how it would work with artificial fertilizer and things like that. So here you can see this is one kind with a different sort of a seed head and a fluff. And this is even a different kind. They look very similar. The coloring and the branching of their leaves are different. So there's a huge variety. This is where the horses have been over the last few days. This is where they were last night, underneath the lime tree. And now waiting patiently for me to open the fence to move them. I've turned the electric off waiting me, for me to move them or allow them to go down into the next section. So, there we go. And they'll immediately start eating. And see, they're only in this tiny square that goes from here up to here. So this is the only fresh grass they'll get for 24 hours which is plenty, more than enough, actually. They're all looking very fat and jolly. But you can see here, this is where they were last night. They'll nibble some more of that through today. And the dogs are finding something interesting under the lime tree. But this way they manure each area a lot more and they don't find a favorite spot to just munch and keep munching so that the species doesn't exist anymore. So this is the way we're moving slowly but surely you can see the next line is there. They won't get to that until Tuesday or sorry Tuesday is down there the square where you can see that big larch tree is in and then Wednesday we start at the top so there'll be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So that is how I'm mob grazing the horses and making it a paradise for wildlife insects and a broad spectrum of grasses. And Marco Polo comes in and immediately starts eating the grass heads, which the sheep don't necessarily do. He loves the grass heads. And he'll go along and eat all the grains. This grasshopper likes going down and getting the succulent green at the bottom. And Ishka likes a combination of the grass heads and the succulent green. Marco Polo goes around and just eats the grass heads. He says, yum, 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 thank you. And you don't eat any grass heads. You eat, you eat their manure.
And so it's already pre-cooked, pre-digested grass. That's what you like. Isn't that right? <laughs>